you're watching this, chances are you're comfortable with the English language. You watch mainstream television, you read mainstream newspapers, and you may be only vaguely aware of another stream, one that's growing in strength, the sector of the media that serves Asian New Zealanders. Daryl Hutchison has our report. Happy birthday to you. A culture clashing cacophony. A multilingual 10th birthday celebration for what, in terms of output, is New Zealand's second largest television operation, the modestly named World TV. It's a wonderful timetable allowing us to meet tonight. From the Auckland suburb of Penrose, World TV transmits 12 channels, most broadcasting programmes from Asia, and 10 of them on pay TV. A locally produced mid-afternoon talkback show in Mandarin is on one of nine Chinese channels. While two serve the Korean community and one is Japanese. The father of one was killed with a shotgun. There's even English, but here, of course, it takes subtitles to make sense of it. Across town, Radio Tirana ranks regularly in the city's top ten. Today's Tirana News leads with a police shooting in Christchurch and Crayfar Farms. Mainstream coverage, but in another minority language. This time, it's Hindi. As plainly as this row of restaurants in downtown Auckland, the country's airwaves prove that New Zealand in 2010 is a nation of extraordinary ethnic diversity. Community radio station Planet FM broadcasts in 45 languages. As well as maintaining their culture, about 70% of Asians in New Zealand still use their original language as their everyday language. That's more than a quarter of a million people and growing, the majority of them in Auckland. In the city's Asian-oriented shopping centres, they can choose from a mess of free newspapers. Among them, the New Zealand Chinese Herald, the Mandarin Pages and the United Chinese Press. Then there's the Korean-language newspaper Good Day, locally produced Japanese magazines, Indian Newslink and many more. Along with news from their home country, including extensive coverage of John Key's recent Asian tour. They'll read about alleged profiteering by supermarkets, layoffs in TVNZ's news and current affairs, and the now-resolved Party Central debacle. Japanese-language Football World Cup coverage includes interviews with captain and coach. <laughs> Tony Ye is editor of the New Zealand Chinese Herald, which prints up to 15,000 copies four days a week. A lot of people uh, coming from China do not have a you know, good ability to read uh, you know, in, in English newspaper or watch uh, you know, TV3 or TV and there or something like that. Matthew John edits the Korean weekly Good Day. He says for the Korean culture to survive in New Zealand, it's vital that the language survives, and his newspaper helps. David Gunley's was Labour. We don't need for that now. We need some picture of John Key. At the offices of the English-language Indian Newslink, editor Venkat Raman says that for his readers, it's not the language that matters, it's the coverage. The mainstream thus far has neglected issues concerning the Indian community, or it has not given the right treatment or coverage to issues that confront the Indian community. 
All the ethnic media insist they offer their communities more than they get from the mainstream media. World TV says it has an advantage when covering local stories with an Asian focus, such as the recent murder of the Chinese business student known as Kiko. We have more information from the Chinese media, especially the close friends uh, with the Kiko. Or, so do you think you're able to do a more thorough job of reporting it? That's right, yes, because they, they, the information, information just flood in. The Chinese Herald often runs verbatim translations of articles from the New Zealand Herald or the Stuff website. But for stories like the introduction of national standards, it tries harder for its highly education-focused readership. We know that uh, national standards is a very hot topic from New Zealand Heralds. And then we uh, send our reporter to interview some Chinese parents to know what the Chinese people view about the national standards. The national standards is not perfect, but it's much better than nothing. Is that what they told you? Yeah. And that's what you've reported here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Radio Tirana's news pays special attention to India, Pakistan and Fiji. But the station's format, music, talkback, shopping, is decidedly mainstream. We like to think that our competitors are not ethnic media, but everybody. So in other words, we're actually trying to make ourselves better. Like most ethnic media, the station treads softly when it comes to contentious homeland issues such as Fiji's militarised politics. Tirana recently scored an exclusive interview with Fijian leader Commodore Bainimarama. We might not be ready for 2014 uh, for election if uh, we don't get any assistance from uh, Australia and New Zealand, for instance. But its own chief says Tirana is careful not to take sides. I don't see us as a supporter of uh, any government or any political party or military for that sense but at the same at the same token we would like the people uh, who are listening to our bulletins or who are listening to our news listen to two sides of the story not just one politically we are neutral as far as the editorial policy is concerned but on issues we do take a stand indian newslink is something of an exception a visit to Fiji last year turned its editor, and therefore the paper, into Bainimarama's supporters. Democracy is not what our concept is. Democracy is what the people of the land want. So would there be some Indian readers who would be offended by the stand you now take? Certainly. That's, I believe, is what a healthy newspaper is all about. In Good Day's offices, a question to the editor about how the paper covers the ongoing tensions between North and South Korea unleashes tensions among the staff. There's so many arguments. <laughs> when at last it comes, the answer is succinct. Okay. Oh, it was shorter this time. Yeah, it's very short. I try my best, he says diplomatically to take a very neutral standpoint as a professional journalist. Which is a claim also made by New Zealand's Chinese media. Business-wise, it's not viable for, for, for newspapers to be anti-China. Asia specialist Professor Manying Ip says local Chinese businesses would be unlikely to support a newspaper that was critical of Beijing and the Chinese government would certainly be unimpressed. It is quite clear in their you know, media policy that, that, that the media is to serve the needs of the government. Yeah. And, and do you believe that they would be trying to influence the overseas media to that end? Well, they would want, them, I think, all right, that they wouldn't want any overseas Chinese newspapers to be anti-China. Do you ever get any pressure from 
official Chinese sources to follow a particular line? Uh, Sometimes they may request, but we don't feel it's a pressure. You don't? We, do, we don't feel it's a pressure, but sometimes they request us, you know, you know, can you actually help us to do something like that? Uh, but they can request, but we don't feel there's a pressure at all. But do you sometimes follow that request? Uh, if it's actually we believe it's good, and then we'll follow it. Uh, if we don't believe it's good, we don't do it. One extremely contentious issue for the Chinese media is the spiritual movement Falun Gong, which in China is outlawed and, according to its followers, persecuted. Basically, uh, I tell you, we are free, but basically uh, we just try to not to uh, cover this kind of story too much, you know, because, because? This is, yeah, because this is a highly controversial issue. And, uh, but isn't that what newspapers should be covering? Sometimes, yeah. One paper is unashamedly partisan and unashamedly anti-Chinese Communist Party, whatever potential advertisers might think. In Chinese and English editions, the Epoch Times, reputedly established by Falun Gong supporters, regularly highlights alleged human rights abuses in China. The latest addition to the ethnic paper pile is also in English. Sister paper of the United Chinese Press, the United Press celebrates New Zealand's growing business relationship with China. It's owned not by a media group, but by a subsidiary of the Hong Kong-listed Natural Dairy, the very company that wants to buy the Krefar Farms in the Bay of Plenty. Do they talk to you about their objectives? Do they have objectives? Uh, this newspaper is completely independent. I'm the editor. Everything that goes into the newspaper is my responsibility. And as I say, I look at it from an editorial perspective. The editor says the prominence he gave to a mere five-sentence story about the owners had nothing to do with them. Whatever their objectives and whatever their language, the people behind New Zealand's ethnic media are uniformly upbeat about their prospects. There'll always be a need for such media. I don't see that ever finishing. It's not just existence, it'll thrive. And they have good cause for optimism. New Zealand's Asian population, the ethnic media's readers, their listeners, their viewers, is forecast almost to double over the next 20 years. I, I suppose people who are not used to seeing Chinese words or Chinese signs, except for noodle houses or anything, than, than any kind of Chinese language thing or, 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 or radio or TV station sounds foreign. But we must remember that New Zealand is changing, like it or not. And I mean, the 21st century is going to be a very Asian century. And the sooner we get used to it, the better.